Hello everyone and welcome back to Ratting Road. This video focuses on showing the stages on how to repaint and detail uh, model interiors for things like coaches and multiple units. It's something that does tend to get overlooked quite a bit in my opinion and it really does make a massive massive difference uh, once it's complete. The model I'm going to be working on in this video is my Abellio Greater Anglia Class 156 which is a real track model and I bought it from Rainbow Railways a couple of months back. This unit came with a horrendous looking Scott Rail interior, just plain purple and white, which I really didn't like the look of and it really did need to go. So I set about the, doing the task of repainting the interiors and adding things like detailing and passengers. This is the first time I've done something like this. So I was a bit out of my comfort zone and this video was a somewhat of a challenge to film. But nonetheless, I hope it motivates a few people to do the same thing and transform their models so they're happier with them. But without further ado, I'll go through all the processes and show you how I transformed my Realtrack 156 into a model I'm absolutely over the moon with. While doing this entire task, I did work on both units at the same time. I worked off one off camera first and then I done the second interior uh, while filming all of the processes I'll be getting rid of the plain looking Scott Rail purple and white interior and painting it into the correct Abellio Greater Angular colour scheme and I've left links to the reference photos that I used in the description below just so you can do a bit of comparison and see for yourselves. It's time now to get straight on with it and I hope you enjoy the video. So once you've carefully removed the bodies, you need to prepare for masking so then you don't get any things like paint or primer or glue just leaking to places you don't want them to. When masking, I masked up the underframe, the cabs and the PCB, both on top and underneath. I used a mixture of Tamiya masking tape in various sizes as well as some ordinary normal painters masking tape. Be sure just to put a bit of pressure, particularly on the underframe where you've masked up, just so then you don't get any leakage going anywhere on the model underneath or really anywhere you don't want it to go. And of course, with the masking tape, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to use a bit too much because too much masking tape is better than not enough. So I made sure that absolutely everywhere was covered where I didn't want any paint or primer to go including the PCB just to protect all of the electronic components, uh, particularly underneath. So once I was happy with the masking, I was able to proceed onto the priming. With the masking complete, it's now time to add the primer. And the primer I used is Heiko Grey Primer. What this does, it creates a nice surface for the paint to adhere to rather than just the plastic. It speeds up the painting process, which allows a good finish just after one single coat. I applied a few light coats of the grey primer at different angles until I was happy with the coverage of the interior, leaving around 15 minutes between each coat and then leaving a full 24 hours once the final coat had been applied. Once the primer had fully dried, I started with painting and the first item I painted was the floor. The floor was painted with Humbrol Matte 32 Dark Grey. The floor was easily the most difficult part to paint due to the seats and the PCB being awkward and getting in the way. But fortunately, the PCB does manoeuvre around a little bit if you are careful. And if you do have the skills to remove the PCB, then I also suggest doing that. I heard it does include uh, wiring afterwards you have to rewire it so that's why I chose not to do it it isn't in my skills yet so with the floor I just covered absolutely everywhere I worked my way uh, across the floors of the unit going underneath the tables and in between the seats as well until I was happy and that I'd covered everywhere getting paint in places you don't want to such as uh, paint just splashing up the bottoms of the seats and the table legs for example is pretty much inevitable at this state but obviously as you continue with the painting and move on to the different areas then you can always tidy up as you go and other colours will just hide it as well. And then once I'd covered everywhere on the floor and underneath all the tables and near the seats I left it a good 24 hours just for it to dry properly before moving on to the next colour. 
The next color I chose to do was the blue on the seats and the blue for that is Humbrol Matte 25. Painting the seats was much easier than painting the floor, but it certainly did take a hell of a lot longer due to around 150 individual seats needing painting. Despite this, I did find the seats really uh, therapeutic to paint in all honesty. So it was a uh, relatively fun despite how long it took. I do suggest taking regular breaks though, just so you don't lose your sanity. Again, don't worry too much about getting paint in places you don't wish to. You can always neaten it up and re or redo it uh, later on on the task if you wish. And then once you've finished painting the seats, just leave it another 24 hours before moving on to the next task. So then it gives it plenty of time for the paint to dry. Once the blue paint on the seats had dried, I went over the backs of them with Humbrol Matte 64, which is more or less the same color as the primer. This just neatened up the backs of the seats and anywhere that I accidentally got any blue paint or black paint from the floor, it just makes it look nicer at the end of it. And I just done it everywhere that needed neatening up. Now the bulk of the paintwork is complete. We start to see a bit of results. And the next part that I painted was the tops of the seats. I had to mix a couple of paints together to get the appropriate color that I wanted as there was no tin already available to buy that came in the correct color. This task didn't take too long, but I still left the paint plenty of time to dry before moving on. The last items that needed painting were the tables and these took a couple of coats to get a good finish. And again, I had to mix up some paints to get the appropriate color. And then when I was happy, leaving it plenty of time to dry. Now that's the paint job complete, it's worth just having a closer look and seeing if you can find any areas that could do with neatening up or places that you missed. If not, just leave the paint plenty of time to dry and then it's ready to be matte varnished for protection. I gave the interiors a coat of matte varnish just to protect all the paintwork. So then it, nothing gets affected when I come around to adding the glue to seal all the figures and details in place. And to do this, I use rail match matte varnish and then leaving another 24 hours for the varnish to dry. So then I can start adding the detailing. Now the detailing commences and I first added some passenger figures. I bought a bag of about 50 of them from door spring models on eBay and they cost me around a fiver. So it's good value for money for doing jobs like this. Straight out of the packet, the figures won't fit in the seats as they are too big but it's always best to use the correct scale figures rather than going under scale because otherwise it just wouldn't look right. But to get the figures to fit, I did need to modify them slightly. I started off by filing around the waist. So I created a rough shape in order for them to fit in between the armrests on the 156 seats. And then once I got the correct shape, I then cut off the legs just so I got the correct height. So then you can see them sitting in the seats at the correct level. As you can see here, and then once I was happy with his position in the seat, he got super glued into position and just left alone. This was pretty much the process for every individual figure I added. And then I uh, maybe cut off the arms as well to sit some figures next to the windows. But by the time the bodies got back on, it isn't noticeable anyway. You could always paint the figures to neaten them up a little bit beforehand, but again, I didn't see much point due to them not being seen in the rough areas once the bodies are back on. I added around 20 passengers per saloon, so there was about 40 passengers in total traveling on the train. It creates it busy enough, but also not busy enough, so you still see the interior after you spent all that work painting it.
once all the passengers were in their seats, I glued the last figure into position, which was the train guard, and I painted him up into an actual Abelio Greater Anglia Guards uniform. To give the unit's interiors a finishing touch, I added some smaller detailing parts, for example, some rail travel tickets seen here that are waiting to be punched by the guard. These were really fiddly to get into position because of how small they are, but it really does add an extra element of interest to the unit and just make a bit more activity going on. Most of these items were from a scale model scenery kit and I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Other items were scratch built, you can really see here where I try gluing a newspaper onto this male figure, just how fiddly this task can be. So patience and timing is really key here. When gluing in the passengers and the detailing, I did try and get creative to create a bit of an atmosphere and some scenes on the trains themselves. A couple of passengers with their travel tickets out waiting to be punched by the guard. The green figure looks like it's also looking out the window. Here we have a man reading the newspaper, but it looks like he's fell asleep. Here we have a couple of men in grey suits, which would suggest that they work for the same place. Also the laptop on the table indicating they're having a business meeting. Passengers with shopping bags. Passengers travelling in groups. Some evidence of irresponsible passengers leaving their rubbish behind. And of course the guard who's about to make his way through the train and punch all the tickets. With all the paint and glue now dry, the long awaited task of removing the masking tape can begin. Obviously taking care not to disturb any wiring or pull any paint up. Trains don't drive themselves in real life, so I fitted a driving figure in one of the cabs. The figure is a Model U figure, but comes supplied from West Hill Wagon Works, which come pre-painted. And I'll leave a link to their shop in the description below. One last look over the model, just so you're happy with it, and then the bodies can go back on, certainly reaching the finishing line now. Now the bodies are back on and the model is completed and you will now see the full effect of adding all of these details and repainting the interior it has. So here you can see the driver with the cab light on, fully illuminated, really visible and even from the side I think he looks really nice and cotch in there. Now the repainted interior really comes to life with the interior lights on. As I said earlier on, you can't really see now that the bodies are back on, that the figures are missing some of their arms and legs. It isn't until you turn your room lights off and leave the passenger lights on that you see the full effect that adding the figures and repainting the interior has. Needless to say, it certainly wouldn't look as good if I didn't be painting the interior and just added the passengers. Well, I hope you can see for yourselves how effective it looks just the putting time and effort into repainting the interiors into their correct liveries and just adding some passengers and smaller details to really bring the models to life. I'm so glad I've done it and I'm really pleased with the end result 
and it is something I would encourage anybody to have. And at the end of the day, if I can do it, so can you. This more or less brings the video to an end and I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you could see for yourself the effect and the vast improvement that it can make to one of your models and I hope it's given you some ideas or some inspiration to do this sort of thing yourself. It really is worth doing and I hope you can agree on that. To round the video up, I want to say a shout out and a big thank you to a few individuals. I want to shout out Richard from St Michael's Hill Richard from Felby and also Will from Motts Lane Model Railway on Instagram just for all the help and guidance and tips on how to undertake this task as it was the first time I've done it as I mentioned earlier I did feel like I jumped in the deep end so always seek advice from your friends and people you know that can help you is some advice I can pass on and I also want to shout out Chris Usher from Denton Lane who provided some information and some knowledge on some 156s particularly when it came to adding the guard as it just helped adding that bit of realism. And on that note, I'll round the video up now and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and happy modelling and stay safe.